So back about 75 episodes ago, I released what might still be the most controversial episode of the Kind Leadership Challenge. The premise was simple. Your team is not your family. I believed this was true then, and I believe it even more now with another year and a half of leadership reading, thinking, and experience under my belt. That's why I'm revisiting this topic, because I think it's easy for those of us in education, libraries, and other caring professions to accidentally get a little too enmeshed in our teams for our own good. And if you are in a tight-knit, emotionally close team and are shaking your head at my choice of topic, I just want to ask you one thing. How many functional families do you know of? Welcome to the Kind Leadership Challenge, where I present short, actionable challenges that empower educational leaders like you to build a better world without burning out. I'm Dr. Sarah Clark, founder of the Kind Leadership Guild, where I use my PhD in higher ed leadership and nearly two decades of experience in academic libraries to advise a growing community of leaders who are ready to transform their school or library's fear, confusion, and drama into confidence, clarity, and trust. Kind leadership's pretty simple, but it's rarely easy. So if you're up for a challenge, stick around to learn how to create a legacy that will strengthen your community long after you're gone. A school or library team is not like a family for one very simple reason. Your employer will never love you, and your team members should never love you. Trying to love them is a one-way road to burnout and disaster. Now, both a healthy team and a healthy family collaborate in a spirit of trust and psychological safety, and I think that's where this confusion of work and family might have gotten started in the first place. However, the purpose of a work team and the purpose of a family are very different things. In a school or library, you are attempting to meet performance goals and serve your students, patrons, and community. In a family, the goal is to protect the family and keep it safe and well. Both of these are important goals, but they have different implications, which lead to different power dynamics, member turnover, and interpersonal challenges. First up, let's talk power dynamics. Because the goal of a family is to protect and love its members as they grow, power dynamics ideally become more balanced and shift around over time. Think about what happens when you wake up one morning and your child has seemingly become a teenager overnight and needs a little bit more freedom to continue growing. Or what happens when you are dealing with a parent who is aging and needs more support with their health care and their activities of daily living. As those dynamics evolve, other aspects of your relationship gradually shift and change as well to reflect what's in the ongoing best interests of the people you love. In a workplace, however, power works differently. The goal is not primarily the wellness of individual members of the team, but rather the collective effectiveness of the team in doing the work that's designed to meet your goals. For that reason, in a team, there are defined leaders and team members. And although people switch roles within a team from time to time, uh, the power dynamics are all much more regimented, documented, and precise. Assuming that all those power dynamics play out within a culture of clarity and trust, the differences in how power works between a team and a family aren't inherently bad. But those power dynamics do mean that what happens in a healthy team is very different from what happens in a healthy family. In a work team, there are performance standards that have to be met and behavioral expectations that have to be enforced. Budgets have to be balanced, even if it means cuts to services or staff. And although a kind leader will expect loyalty from their team, they don't want so much loyalty that their team is scared to speak up or ask questions if they think their leader is making a mistake. More seriously, 
A leader also doesn't have the right to ask a team member to put the organization's needs over their own needs for health and rest. Second, there is, or at least should be, a heck of a lot more turnover in a healthy team versus a healthy family. A new arrival to your team should be welcomed as a valuable asset who brings new perspectives, not eyed with suspicion like a new sibling who was promised to be a fun playmate but really just smells funny and cries all the time. And a departure of a team member should be seen as a bittersweet farewell, not an act of exile or betrayal. Through no malice or even intent, overly tight teams can be hard to break into and at their worst can come with unspoken initiations and hazing rituals. And close-knit organizations sometimes struggle with departures of longtime members, both for those who move on and the people who remain. That dynamic can mean that teams can stagnate and harden and even become brittle. And family, though they may feel like they are, a too solid team can crack into panic and toxicity at the first big unexpected change. So why is it that people, leaders very much included, have such a tendency to mix up their teams with their families in the first place? My working theory is that all of us bring our family baggage to work and semi-consciously try to recreate those relationships if we're not careful. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have grown up in a pretty healthy family by the somewhat looser standards of the 1980s and 90s, but I still have some interpersonal issues here and there because, unfortunately, I was raised by fallible human beings. And as a leader, I have to be especially careful not to bring my issues into the office. I've witnessed and coached in situations where people are creating office drama by playing out their past and present interpersonal dynamics with spouses, parents, and kids, often without realizing it. I'm not a therapist, so I'm not about to suggest treatment for that kind of thing. And as a leader, neither should you. But here's what you can do instead if your team is getting stuck in family drama. If the key difference between a work team and a family team is the power dynamic, then it's time for you as a leader to take a deep breath, compartmentalize whatever family stuff you may have brought to the situation, and calm the waters by establishing clear boundaries and expectations. You can't fix the fact that your front desk clerk's uncle stole her slice of birthday cake when she was seven, but you can require her to speak to her manager with respect. And that manager might have to learn to take a breath and remember that her desk clerk isn't her challenging toddler who's been keeping her up nights all week. And as disappointing as some of you may find this truth, you will best be able to manage those inevitable family dynamics by keeping yourself from getting too close to your team. In most cases, you should strive to be friendly but not friends. You need to preserve your ability to step back onto the balcony so you can observe your team, see how it's working, and humanely but effectively steer them where they need to go to meet your shared goal. I realized from my first management role supervising library student workers that I would never be able to be as close with my team as they were with each other. And with each time I moved up the ladder, that distance grew a little. I have had to grieve that. But it's a sacrifice that's required of a kind leader who wants their team to meet their full potential. So here's your challenge for this week. Grab your journal and go to a quiet space somewhere. And do an honest examination of whether or not your team has become a bit too much like a family. And if it has, what steps can you take to establish some distance? If you want to take on this challenge by yourself, the Next Steps checklist at kindleadershipchallenge.com slash next can provide a great structure for investigating the strengths and opportunities in your team culture. 
And if you need a sanity check from fellow leaders to make sure you're seeing things clearly, head to kindleadershipguild.com to learn more about my private community of leaders committed to helping each other build a better world without burning out. If you want to get notified every time there's a new episode or have a colleague who might find these challenges useful, head over to kindleadershipchallenge.com to learn more and subscribe to the show via email or your favorite podcast app. Never doubt that day by day, you're building a better world, even if you can't see it yet. So until next time, stay kind now. Need a confidential community of like-minded educational leaders who'll support you in your ups and downs? Check out the Kind Leadership Guild. Want a leadership coach who's as close as your DMs? That's also the Kind Leadership Guild. And what about on-demand training that guides you through everyday challenges and the big shifts that will help you build a better world without burning out? You guessed it. The Kind Leadership Guild has you covered there, too. To learn more, head to kindleadershipguild.com.